Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is July the 18th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Thursday treated me nice and right. Um, let's see, I didn't do too much. Work was, uh, it was pretty slow. Had a little bit of dead time, but not too much. It was like, boop, just just the right amount. Um, let's see here. Um, what do we eat? What was food? Um, I made burgers and um, fries. What else did we have? And hot dogs. You know, it's pretty classic. Um, it was very yummy. This is my uh, food corner meal last night. Sorry. Uh, let's see here. Also a, ni- a nice report. I mean, I, I always kind of say this. I, I go back and forth. But, um, you know, I got on the scale and I was like, okay, I'm a couple pounds lighter. So we like that. We love to see that. Um, I'm sure I will gain the weight back and then be anxious about it again uh, soon. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else that I really wanted to report on the uh, personal news side of things? No. Like I said, good day. Hopefully you've had a good day as well as we're closing down this week. Um, I'm, I'm happy, even though I really don't have any, like, major stapled in plans yet, you know, uh, to be determined what my weekend's gonna look like, but, um, I think at, at this point in the, in the month, in the year, I'm just happy. I'm just happy to exist. I, I was thinking about this, because obviously, like, what, and then the last little turmoil we had was the, the ticket shit, and, you know, we've gotten through that, you know, I guess, update. Uh, we paid it. We paid our way. We found a way. <laughs> and it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was still, you know, a ticket. Um, but um, we'll get into some cop stuff in a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm in a good place. Knock on some wood. Um, I, I think there's definitely some things that I've been um, in my bag about, so to speak, or upset about. But I don't know. Like, it, it doesn't it doesn't supersede what I've done this year for myself and what has been uh, blessed, bequeathed upon me uh, by the universe, the, you know, powers of be, whatever, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I feel like there's a certain kind of content that I feel. And I always like when I can stop and really like smell the rose, ro- the roses, the roses and be like, yeah, this is good. Like, you know, are we are we at a perfect place? No. Am I am I worried about X or Y thing? Of course, you know. Like there there are things, there are things I'm trying to get through for sure, but we're making things happen and I feel I feel good about that. And I'm happy to be with the friends that I have. That's something that I'm I'm really appreciative of and uh, I'm glad with the of the, the I'm glad glad proud of the network that I'm in and a part of. I know that's a weird way to describe your friendship group, but you know, like it, that's just what it feels like to me. It, it's people that I know that like I can hit up and I can trust and I, I like that. You know, it might not be a ton of people, but it, it's nice to have that, you know, as a person who is a very like uh, I don't know, solo, solitary person it's nice to know that there are at least a few people that you know you can hit up and you know they got your back um so yeah i don't know i'm you know i'm ranting i'm going full blog mode here sorry 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 um let's go ahead and do our startup and we'll get into some news All right. Oorah. Well, that put me in the spirit. Okay, we're good. Um, From NBC News, French president accepts prime minister's resignation but keeps him as head of caretaker government. French president Emmanuel Macron accepted the prime minister's resignation Tuesday but kept him on as head of a caretaker government as France prepares to host the Paris Olympics at the end of the month. The president's office said in a statement that Macron accepted the resignation of Prime Minister Gabriel, I'm sure I'm going to say this wrong with the wrong accent, uh, Gabriel Attal and other ministers on Tuesday. Attal and other other government members are to handle current affairs until a new government is being appointed, the statement said. 
There is no firm timeline for when Macron must name a new prime minister. Following parliamentary elections this month that left the National Assembly with no uh, dominant political bloc in power for the first time in France's modern republic. The caretaker government led by Atal will focus only on handling day-to-day -day affairs. So I don't think it's fair to say that this is like a zombie government kind of situation. Like I think they are going to be doing and, and like maintaining laws, but at the same time they're not going to be doing any advancement maybe um until they actually get things established which right now things are are very much a mess you know like the what is it, the national front party you know they won um but they didn't win with a, a decisive majority and i almost wonder and maybe this is just me being conspiratorial here is if this was maybe somewhat of a plan of macron's to be like hey like because Atal initially said, hey, like, we're not going to win, so, like, I'm going to resign. Like, it, that just makes sense. And Macron's like, no, don't do that. And he, you know, insisted that he didn't resign. But now it just, you know, everything's kind of on the wall. And I guess Atal is like, I don't want to do this. I'm not doing this. Or maybe this is just all part of the plan. Because now they can't uh, make any government action against him because he's already resigned. And he's in this like kind of just gray area as a like a caretaker so to speak so it's like was this planned like was this a move um yeah i guess i should just read it so it sounds a little bit better normally members of government are barred from being lawmakers but tuesday's move allows atal to take up his seat as a lawmaker and lead the group of macron's centrist allies in the national assembly it also insulates him from a no confidence vote because he already has resigned as a caretaker government and, uh, and a caretaker government cannot be subject to such a vote. So it's a very little cheeky loophole. Um, if this is something that doesn't last too much longer beyond the Olympics, which is coming up soon. Uh, actually, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit, a little bit uh, Paris, uh, France part two. Um, then like, okay, like as long as power gets shifted to the right people, you know, and a new government is fully established and we're moving. Awesome. Okay, cool. But who knows? I mean, this really is a shit show. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, a leftist party, since, you know, the, you know it, it was a leftist party that more or less came out on top, um, that someone from the actual left comes through and not some bullshit centrist, you know, that some like, I don't know, Macronist, lackey, whatever. I would hate to fucking see that. Or really anything like adjacent to that. I mean, yeah, yes, of course. It, it beats anything from the right. You know, anything from like uh, Le Pen's party. What is it? The, the National Rally, whatever. Um, but the fact of the matter is, this is kind of what I was saying, you know, throughout when we were talking about this shit. Is that it is a huge L because they are in the conversation now more than ever. They are closer to power than they ever have been. That's still a fact. So now you have to hear more of these fucking guys. It's the same kind of situation that's taking place with in the UK, where you have like Nigel Farage and the alt right. Now they're in Parliament yapping, and it's like, bro, no one wants to hear your fucking ass. But apparently, enough people did want to hear this motherfucker because he's in the room and it's the same thing with you know um the uh national rally you know I'm, I'm sure i'm gonna get these names mixed up or whatever but yeah uh yeah i wanted to talk about that a little bit to start us off um but there is more uh, a little bit of a uh, perry news a little bit of olympic news a little bit of news about the sim so yeah let's go ahead and let's dive in from the abc news Paris mayor swims in sin to show how clean the water is ahead of 2024 Olympics. Uh, I, uh, um, Anne Hidalgo, the mayor of Paris, has swam in the sin on Wednesday morning in a showcase of how clean the river is for the outdoor swimming events at the 2024 Paris Olympics, which opens in just nine days. The Sins water quality, however, remains questionable and has repeatedly failed tests in advance of the 33rd Olympiad. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this was like a big ploy. Initially, it was supposed to be um, Hidalgo and then also Emmanuel Macron. Uh, uh, guess who flaked? Guess who just didn't fucking show up? You know, our favorite fucking president, Emmanuel fucking Macron. Yeah, dude, real cool, dude. I, I guess. I, I guess bad girls do it well. Um, but yeah, it was her and then um, another guy who was also involved, I think, in the Olympics. I'm sure I'm skipping over them, my bad. Let me see here. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Um, uh, here we go. She was accompanied by Tony es- Esquengat, a former Olympic uh, canoeing champion who successfully led Paris's bid for the 2024 Summer Olympics and is serving as the head of organizing of the organizing committee as well as the top security official for the Greater Paris Region, Mark Goulemay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they swam, and they're still alive. They haven't turned into super mutants yet, so that's cool. I love that. Um, but I think it's still fucked up that you're making people, you're making Olympians who have, like, literally worked their entire lives to, like, do this event. <clears throat> You're making them risk life and limb, you know, or innards, whatever, on this event because you want to make them swim in like fucking poo poo water, and and they and now don't get me wrong, they've spent I believe billions of dollars to try to treat the sin, to try to make provisions so that like oh when it rains all the poop water it just it just flows over but like uh we have a basin for that but maybe it might it might flood too much on a rainy day and that might happen since this is an outdoor event and we have to run it in the sand because that's what they fucking want in france it maybe maybe it doesn't work and these little reservoirs just fill back into the sand and then there's more poop so uh, you know there's that that's an issue um, I didn't cover um, a story where they initially had tried to plan this before with Hidalgo and uh, Macron. And, you know, I, and I love it. I love the protest energy in France. I, I, I applaud it. And, and honestly, at the end of the day, this, this shit is already swimming in shit. Like, th- th- that is what it is. So they, there were people planning. They had set up an app to shit into the sin when these guys were going to do this little fucking exhibition. I actually wonder if that went through. I should actually check my sources. Weird AF news. Um, I might have to see if, uh, if that worked out. Maybe there might be a little update there, but, um, uh, apparently, you know, Hey, she's fine. Everything's good. I hope that there's nothing wrong for any of these Olympic swimmers, but I just think that this shit is gross. And I think that you, if you have so much money to burn into this Olympics, couldn't you have just, like, I don't know, done a pool? Just done a big pool? I feel like that just could have been arranged, and you didn't have to make this kind of flex of, like, no, the sin is fine. The sin is great. We're not going to do any kind of plan B. Nothing. We're going to run it. But you know this shit is shitty. This is terrible. Uh, it just makes you feel bad for, like, once again, the people who are re- who are literally living and breathing and potentially dying for this a chance to win a goddamn chunk of metal and, you know, now they're going to swim in this fucking poo-poo water like it's a Hunger Games movie. I don't know. It just feels like it's unnecessary. But, hey, I'm going to do Let's move on. Uh, let's get into the fucking real shit, the gritty shit, the shit I don't like. Um, from CBS News. Illinois deputy charged with murder shot woman in face and discouraged partner from trying to save her, authorities say. I know I should say trigger warnings and stuff, but I mean, y'all have been with me for years at this point, some of you, so y'all know how I move. This whole, ep- every episode should just be a trigger warning at some point. That's a jump scare. I hate to say it, um, but let's, let's, let's get into it. An Illinois sh- sheriff's deputy charged with murder and the death of a black woman shot her in the face during a tense moment over a pot of water in her home and then discouraged his partner from trying to save her. Um, said Thursday. Authority said Thursday. The details were in a court document filed in support of keeping uh, and keeping fired Sangamon County Deputy Sean Grayson in custody without bond. Uh, Sonia Massey, 36, was killed at her home in Springfield, about 200 miles or 322 kilometers for my international listeners, uh, south of Chicago. After deputies responded to her 911 call about a possible prowler uh, early on July 6th, which is something I, I really hate about this, is it's the grim irony, and it's the thing that it's like people don't understand. Like you, like you have this adage of like in, in in a lot of fucking communities, don't call the fucking cops. Like what are they gonna do? They're just going to make your fucking shit worse. And you have in this situation literally the cruel fucking joke of calling the cops to stop someone from prowling and now you're getting killed. You're getting shot in the fucking face by the person who's supposed to serve and protect you. Um, Prosecutor said Grayson aggressively yelled at Massey 
to put a pot down and then uh, she put her hands in the air and declared, I'm sorry, and ducked for cover before being shot in the face. Grayson also discouraged the other deputy from getting his medical kit, prosecutor said. Now, this is where I guess I will give at least some fucking human points to the other deputy. The other deputy still rendered aid and stayed with Miss Massey until medical help arrived. First assistant state uh, attorney Mary Rogers wrote, uh, Grayson at no time attempted to render aid to Miss Massey. State attorney John Milheiser said in a review of body camera uh, video doesn't support the use of deadly force. Um, and you can kind of tell how they're moving that like, this is really bad. Like th there's no kind of fucking wiggle room that you love to see motherfucking uh, keyboard warriors do on fucking Twitter and all this fucking bullshit. Like, you know that when you see this shit, it is going to fuck you up because there's no reason for it. And you can say, he should, you should just do what the cop said. This person was scared. You called to say that there was a stalker around and next thing you know there's a gun in your fucking face and and then you try to just react because you are scared and now you're dead like enjoy enjoy being that guy because i know there's going to be some guy or gal out there who's got to back the blue that fucking hard but once again i love when it's so fucking blatant these motherfuckers cannot they have to say we have to run this to trial you're done you're fired so like this guy is done you know his gun is bad is up um so at least there's that, like this guy is at least off the streets and not like on, you know, unpaid leave or paid leave. I love when they do that shit. Um, you know, it, there's that at least, at least we're getting some charges for this person. We will see how it goes once it goes to trial, of course. Um, but obviously this is very fucking unfortunate. It's very fucking sad. Um, but you know, I'm not going to stop covering this shit. You know me. Um, it has become definitely a part of, uh, I don't want to say a brand, but like, you know, my black ass is going to talk about this shit. Um, I don't, I just, I just don't want it to go uncounted. So, uh, let's move on though to some other fucked up shit. Um, weird fucking behavior. Um, and it's cop, but it's constable. So I guess not. I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I'm really learning about this shit on the fly. What is a constable? I, I guess more or less it's like, it's like a, a cop adjacent. They have different responsibilities, different things, levels of like what they handle, but like it, it's cop like to me, this feels like piggly wiggly. I don't know. It, you can file in the comments if you're an expert. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about what happened. Um, from the Miami Herald man finds air tag hidden in his car learns it's registered to county constable cops say police say a pennsylvania constable is connected to a gps tracking device that was hidden under the passenger seat in a man's car local outlets reported lancaster county constable sean spinagle I, not such a funny cool name spinagle 56 of I'm going to fuck this up and giggle. Let it. Let it. It's let it. It's got to be let it. And I don't know why I wanted to say let it, but it's because I'm, I'm a grade schooler. Um, was charged July 15th with stalking and harassment stemming from an incident on May 24th, according to court records and the Lancaster County Constable Association. It's a whole fucking group. I, I really don't pay attention to these constables. In my head, I'm thinking of, like, some olden world guy with some, like, weird bucket hat and, like, a blue police suit. That's that's not a constable. But, like, that's in my head. That's what a constable was until I actually, like, got to this article. So, whatever. Um, Spinagle's attorney declined to comment uh, to McClathy News on July 17th. Um, East... Lampeter Township Police said a man reported in June that he had been receiving phone notifications that an Apple AirTag was moving with him for three weeks, but he was unable to find it. Lancaster Online reported, citing charging documents. Now, this is something I learned a little bit last year because this was a fucked up thing that was happening with AirTags, but apparently they had to update the software because... If you don't know what an AirTag is, essentially it's something that you're supposed to have, like you can attach it to your keys or something that you don't want to fucking lose or, or like let's say maybe get stolen, whatever. It allows you to hop on the app and like find it. And it's like, okay, that's really cool software. That's really neat. What a cool ingenuity. I love technology. But people, the freaks, were fucking using this shit to like lowjack other people 
um, let's just like throw out a fucking gross scenario here. You're a fucking dude and you're looking to get somebody, a lady, and you literally air tag onto their car, uh, you slip it into their purse, whatever, and then you stalk them using an air tag. So they're like, oh shit, we have to do some kind of update to this. So that's where I left the story up until now. Now I'm learning that there are constables out here just taping the shit to fucking cars and being like, yeah, I'm that guy. I'm gonna get ya. Also, we don't know what the beef was, what the incident that led to. There's not details, at least as of uh, as I know as of yet. But essentially, this guy had attached this to this guy's car. But the software has been updated to, I guess, let a person know that's like, hey, just so you know, there's an air tag that's like traveling with you. I don't know the science or not the science technology behind that, but I also know that there's. Um, software that they can use to track it and that's how they they track the air tag to spinagle's phone number and that's how they got him so this is very odd also i guess it's worth noting that i think this guy is also a constable the victim yeah the victim who is from upper oh i got it lecoq <laughs> upper lecoq township um is also a constable according to a news release from the lancaster county constable association so I don't know what this constable on constable beef crime is, but I mean, this dude take it, took it to a whole other level. This feels like a Saw movie to me when you're attaching air tags to like someone's car. Um, and the dude was looking for it because he was getting this notification. And he's like, I just can't find it. And then finally, I guess with the help of the police or whatever, they found it. So that's awesome that like nothing bad happened to this guy. I don't know. Maybe this guy was just doing it. Just, I don't, I'm not going to do any excuse for it. You have to think what the worst. If, if I'm looking at my shit and someone has air tagged me, like there's some fucking Kroger brand spy. Oh no, 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 sweetheart. That that's crazy. That's crazy. You're a demon. <laughs> Get out of my life. Get out of my car. <laughs> okay, that's... That, we're not done yet. Uh, I, I, we're not wrapping this up. Um, you know, we're actually getting into some spy shit. Um, so, yeah, let me uh, take my last break, and we'll go ahead and close this out. Ooh, I'm actually going to add a water break to this. I'm going to hydrate. Mm. Yummy, yummy water. Ooh -wee. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a little different, th little difference here. We're just gonna do actually a little quick riff because I want to talk about a little Trump update from the assassination. Um, they learned that Crooks apparently um, was going to target not just Trump. He was either gonna go for Trump or Biden. He was gonna pick either or. So that was something I was gonna do a whole other thing about that. But I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw that in there i think he also left some kind of like parting words on like a discord said some kind of gaming messaging thing and i just quickly assumed that it was discord because like what other thing are people using <clears throat> otherwise it would have just felt like whatsapp or something so yeah that's a little bit of a free form news i'm gonna throw up there um i don't know felt like you know yapping about that but let's get on to our last thing i'm sorry um the spirit moved me from the telegraph CIA analysts gave information to South Korea in exchange for Louis Vuitton bags, prosecutors claim. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. A high-profile foreign policy analyst and foreign CIA officer has been charged with serving as a secret agent for South Korea's intelligence service in exchange for luxury goods, including expensive handbags. Hey, I love, a, I love a spy who can secure the bag. Um, South Korean intelligence officers allegedly provided Sue Mi Terry with Bodega Veneta. I'm not getting that right. Bodega Veneta. I'm broke. I'm a broke bitch. Um, and Louis Vuitton handbags and Dolce & Gabbana. Uh, just one coat and a Dolce & Gabbana coat. Dinners at Michelin star restaurants and more than three uh, thirty-seven thousand um, dollars in covert funding for a public 
policy program on Korean affairs that she ran. Uh, according to the indictment filed in federal court in Manhattan, an exchange uh, she advocated South Korean government positions and the media shared non-public information with intelligence officers and facilitated access for uh, South Korean officials to their U.S. government counterparts. Excuse me. Miss Terry, who also previously held a senior position at the U.S. National Security Council, has denied the charges through her lawyer. The court case details how her work as an agent allegedly began in two, uh, 2013, two years after she left the U.S. government em uh, employment, and lasted a decade. S uh, she has since worked at well-known think tanks, m including mostly, or most recently, the Council on Foreign Relations, where she has a prominent commentator, or she has become a prominent commentator on Korean Peninsula and East Asian affairs. The charges are part of a growing effort by the Justice Department to counter foreign influence in American affairs, which has resulted in dozens of prosecutions in recent years. Uh, something I definitely don't want to miss, though, is that uh, South Korea is not a defendant and its embassy in Washington has not commented on the case. So I kind of I find it very interesting here that uh, Terry is just kind of being left hung out to dry. Like, at the end of the day, also, it's it's worth noting that Terry was born in Seoul and raised in Virginia and now lives in New York. So, I mean, in my eyes, this is definitely an American citizen, um, for whatever that's worth. Um, but for America, like, as a nation state, to be like, hey, we find what you did obviously very fucked up and criminal and we're going to charge you for this, but then not have any kind of, like statement to issue any kind of indictment to issue in terms of like south korean is like isn't that fucked up isn't that a little sussy but then of course you always have to remember that this is our ally and it's like no nah, it's okay i'm sure they gave him a talking to behind the scenes like ah i can't believe y'all were doing this don't do this but i mean i've said it before i'll say it again it's just a spy game baby where everybody's at it everybody's at it you know we're probably spying on south korea our own ally doing for whatever fucking reason um but yeah i, I obviously i found this interesting i like the subject matter and i don't know um you know do I, would i say she served i would say she served multiple nations i would say she served cunt uh, I don't know. I mean, it was fashion. Uh, some of the some of the pics, uh, some of the pics that I saw from some of her outlooks, like uh, her outfits. Just obviously judging just on them, I didn't like some of the denim and then and, and some of the the color. I don't know. You know, that, that's just me. I, I'm not I'm not a long denim skirt guy. But that's uh, hey, I'm a, I'm a man. What, what can I say? But um, uh, other outfits definitely slay. Loved it. Great. You, uh, I get it. Worth every penny. Um, but I don't know, man. It, I'd have to wonder it's worth it. But I often think, too, because I was like, I found myself having a little bit of pity for a second. But then I thought about Bob Menendez, who, you know, we just covered, you know, literally had gold bars and, you know, pockets of his jackets and shit. But it's like, maybe I feel a little bit bad because that's like a fucking politician. And it's like, yeah, you did it in like the bribery way. And that's how you became a foreign agent, though he denies that. Um, whereas like here... Like, this is, like, a person who I want to say is a civilian, but I have to stop myself. And it's like, no, this is a CIA analyst. You know, they they, they were an alphabet boy at the end of the day. So, you know, I, I don't feel that bad at the end of the day. You know, at the end of the day, you played the role. You played the game. What, what can you say? It is what it is. You got caught. So that, that's where I'll leave it, I guess, you know. Um, is there anything else I want to add? No, that feels good. Ooh, pretty good time there. Um, if you'd like to help out, support the effort, become a newsie today. Patreon.com slash Isaiah News. Uh, free ways to hit me up, Isaiah News 1 at gmail.com. And then uh, free ways to hit me up, uh, any of the socials. Uh, feel free to follow me on the YouTube. I love that. We'd love to see the numbers go up on that. Uh, leave a like. Leave a cool comment. Um, sharing is caring. And hopefully I'll see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.